Hello and welcome back to NSUSpartans.com. Ross Gordon now with the Assistant Sports Information Director here at Norfolk State University, Mike Bello, and the Head Women's Basketball Coach here at Norfolk State University as well. Coach Deborah Clark, glad to have you with us, especially after a good weekend here at Norfolk State University where the Spartans came off with two victories, uh, their first two-game winning streak of the season. And, Mike, it was two games in which the Spartans just needed a win, first of all. And it was two games which we saw uh, – how this team can respond to adversity, especially in the second game. And Norfolk State did a good job of taking care of business here at home. Yeah, and when they had that, you know, when you're, when you're struggling early in the season like they did, and you have so many games away, and we have so many home games to finish out the season at MEAC, you got to protect your home court. And they certainly came out and did that. Um, and I was more impressed, you know, they've, now they've won two MEAC games in a row. They actually haven't done that in, uh, I think it's about six years now. So, you know, they're, they're kind of getting on the right footing, you know, protect their home court. You know, obviously it's going to be a tough game at Hampton, but, you know, to come out, and get two wins, two quality wins, is really good for them. I think what's been huge for the last couple of weeks now, Mike, has been the, the emergence of what we thought Rika Trice was, and that's the leader of this basketball team. She's doing it, not only scoring the basketball a little bit more now, but she's also being the floor general, making sure her players get in good spots where she can deliver the basketball to them. Eight points, eight assists, and six rebounds over her last three contests. But it's been her leadership that's really pushed the Spartans uh, to these last two victories because, again, she's playing a lot of minutes now at the point guard position. Yeah, you know, they've kind of lost bodies over the over the course of the uh, course of the year. And obviously as a senior and a point guard, the most experienced on a team, she really it's her job to lead this team and you know go out there and she, everyone's going to have to look towards her to do that. But not only her also but uh, Rachel Gordon with her score. I think with them two playing it the way they've been playing lately, I think that's really been the key for them. Coach Clark, Rachel Gordon's averaging 15.3 points per game and pulling down 10 rebounds in her last uh, three ball games. But it seems like it started six games ago because she scored in double figures, six games straight for us. And it, we've really seen her emerge as an offensive threat, especially from 14 and out. Well, we have really worked with her on that. We knew she was going to be a good rebounder. That wasn't the thing, but the biggest thing was to try to have her be a complete basketball player. And offensively, the last couple of years, that was lacking in her game. So she's, I get to her credit, she spends a lot of time in the gym working on a shot, working on trying to get better, and all the hard work is really paying off for her. What do you think uh, um, was the key for Rachel turning that corner? You know, she's had some good games, not this, this year, you know, beforehand, but last year she's had games. What do you think the key was her for the kind of finally step up and, and get that consistent well, play? Well, I think a lot of it has to do with, with work and repetition. And, you know, after you work a lot, you build confidence that you can make the shots. And she puts in a lot of time. And I think the fact that, you know, she's a competitor and she has set some individual goals that she wants to achieve this year. And to do that, she's going to have to score. And the fact that our team has not been performing as well as we all expected, I think she's taking a lot of that burden on her as well. So she's a competitor, she's working hard, and uh, she just matured so much as a player and as a person to get to where she is right now. Uh, Rachel's more of a quiet leader, and she leads by example. But one thing that we've seen over the last three games is players around her have started to pick it up a little bit when she starts to get going. And that's a huge key for us, especially in, inside, because post players are now starting to get open shots. Uh, uh, Batavia Owens has had a, a little bit better of a time go of it as well. I think they've really helped each other as the season has gone along because Batavia is playing well as well. Right, and they have. We've really been working on our high-low game a lot in practice early in the year. We were running and we weren't finishing plays. Now Batavia's passing the Rachel, Q's passing the Rachel, and everyone's finishing now. So it makes us a little bit tougher to guard. So, again, we have our inside scoring working as well as our outside. You know, we're a better team, naturally. Yeah, I think that was the big thing that we saw this weekend. You know, there were several times where we were just impressed by the passing, the, you know, three in a row quick passes, and all of a sudden Rachel Gordon's free underneath the basket. Um, I mean, what was, was that there earlier in the season, or you think it's kind of... Well, we've been working on that quite a while. We do practice sometimes without the dribble to prove to them that you can pass and score without dribbling mm -hmm. the ball. A lot of times we waste dribbles. So we've been spending a lot of time with, you know, ball movement, ball reversal, get the defense to work. And the more we move the ball naturally, the better shot we're going to get. One thing that helps those inside uh, players is uh, a jump shot made or two by, by our, our perimeter players. And Ava Parham has played consistent over the last couple of games. She's been giving us double figures and near double figures. Ebony Brown has hit a couple of key jump shots in a couple of key moments. Uh, beyond those two games, I know we won the two games, and maybe, and maybe the University of Maryland Eastern Shore might be the most 
troubling game out of the two. We won the we won the two games, but we talked about it before. Getting getting play from both both the post and the perimeter at the same time. Right. It has to be key for this team to be successful. And that's the key. You look at the box score from those two games. There's consistent scoring across the board. Nobody has 35 points. You know, eight, 10, 12, four people in double figure thinking we were at Delaware State. That's how we're going to be successful. We know all the way. You know, starting the season, we're going to have to get it done by committee. And when our guards are shooting the ball well and the post are finishing well. Like I know we can. Again, it's a great outcome for us. And you know, uh, when you had some struggling early in the season. You get two wins in the MIAC. Um, I'm sure it's big. Um, it doesn't need to be said that that's a big confidence booster. Um, so, what do you kind of see? Is this kind of one of the points in the season where okay, we're going to turn it around and, and really finish strong as it as year goes out? We're going to build some momentum now. Well, that's the plan. I think we've done some you know really good things these last two games. We want to continue to improve. We know we face a you know good challenge on Monday at Hampton. And again, you look at the film and we're playing much better now than we were playing back in January. So I feel a lot better going into this game on Monday. We go in, we play well, we come back home, we've got two, three, three more games at home. So I'm feeling really good about it. And the key is, like you said, we want to go into the tournament with the best possible seed we can have, feeling good about ourselves, playing well with some momentum and some confidence, and uh, have a great tournament. Huge thing about the last two games for us, especially against Delaware State and UMS, we really held their leading score. Corona Roach got hot down the stretch right. a little bit, but we really corralled their leading score. So the teams really didn't have that much to go off of. In Hampton, uh, it really doesn't matter with them. They have a plethora of scores, and they have people who can get it going at any time. To talk about the key to this, uh, the key to this Hampton team. Before that, before this, uh, before they played us here at Joe Eccles Hall, they were only winning uh, in this 10-game winning streak games by 3.2 points per game. After us, they started putting people away. They were winning by an average margin of 19 points per game. Right. So they're playing their best basketball at this time. And too. that's very, very true. And they're playing good basketball on both ends of the floor. They're putting the ball in the basket and they're defending. Nothing fancy. It's basic half-court man-to-man defense. They pressure the ball and they really get after it hard. So it's going to be a key where we play well on both ends of the floor as well. It's not going to be able to stop one person. Everyone's going to have to stop all five people on the floor because out of the four, five starters, four of them in double figures, um, two of them in double rebounds almost. So it's going to be a, it's going to have to be a concerted team effort for us to be successful. And Ross mentioned your defense. I really thought too that your defense has really kind of stepped up lately and you know obviously good defense begets good offense as well. Um, talk about the way your defense really has kind of started to step up lately in the past few weeks. Well we've been really preaching to them you know we're not a team that can score 75 80 points so our best way of, of attacking and being successful is to stop people. In the games which we won we kept our opponents under 50 points under maybe 30 percent shooting from the field so that's going to be our key so I try to remind them of the things we do well when we have success to continue to do that and I think like you said if our defense is is um, producing like it should it will generate some offense for but right now, I think, you know, initially our defense is good, but sometimes our opponents getting that second and third opportunity in the possession is hurting us. So we're going to have to really work on limiting our opponents, and Hampton in particular, to one shot per possession. Mm -hmm. And finally, Coach, the last two weekends uh, uh, on the road, but it's weird weekends on the road because mm -hmm. uh, it's one game on Monday night against Hampton. That game will start at 430. And then on the next weekend, we return to the road, but we go on Saturday to Delaware state uh i've asked coach evans this what do you think about the last this this stretch of games because we get really two weeks of games 14 days where we only play two games right when it's good for us to get some extra rest i mean we're not playing a lot of people rachel and rika playing 36 plus minutes so it would be a good opportunity for them to rest to spend some time on improving us uh, going on the road to Delaware State, that's going to be a challenge because actually we beat them here, so they're going to be ready to, to play hard. It'd be interesting to see how we respond to that. But I think after we've been doing as well as we've been playing, I think they'll be ready. Coach, uh, Monday night, 4.30, special game time. Game time is at 4.30. Just want to let everybody know it is on ESPNU at 4.30, so uh, wear your best clothes because uh, it's going to be on television. <laughs> it might you do so, too. You might get caught. So make sure you uh, support the Spartans, whether you come over to Hampton or not. You can also listen to the game on the NSU Sports Network. Uh, we thank you, Coach, for your Certainly. time. For Mike Bello and Coach Clark, I'm Ross Gordon. Thank you for watching NSUSpartans.com.